Okay, so how do you troubleshoot beginning tracking, beginner tracking? Um, I think sooner or later, uh, every one of us who practices with the dog tracking encounters encounters um, kind of lack of stimulation in a dog, and some some dogs consider it kind of boring. Uh, once in a while, it happens, not with every dog. But then, what do you do? It is better to find the remedy rather sooner than later because if the dog doesn't enjoy tracking and you keep forcing the dog to do that you're losing motivation it's much harder to recover later you you might need to restart the dog which is you know takes uh, much longer and it's more difficult so <clears throat> Uh, about uh, at this point, in f in phase three, you might start getting notice that the dog is not very excited to do the long track and kind of search for food will start quitting or not to motivate it. So if this is the case, uh, this video is for you. And I want to share a couple of tips of what I do with my dogs. So first of all, if you remember in my previous uh, session, I explained to you that you can use food motivation, meaning that you uh, deprive a little bit of food uh, prior uh, in the evening prior to tracking and uh, the dog is uh, naturally a bit more hungry so it's naturally more motivated to track but uh, the problem with this remedy is that you need to uh, uh, it's a command right so the dog needs to listen and if you tell them to track he needs to track um, and then if the dog is not hungry what he doesn't do the job then it's not gonna work right but you start with that just to see if food motivation will be enough because that's the easiest you do um, and i explained in the previous videos that i don't starve my dog at all i i don't think it's the right approach it's not correct don't starve your dogs but what you can do is that the evening before or maybe the morning and the evening before so the day before just cut the food uh, the portion of dog's meal in half um, and that's about it as far as I go. I don't think if the dog, if this doesn't motivate the dog enough to a successful result in tracking, then you need to look for some other options. Uh, what I want to share with you, what I do is uh, I use ball, ball motivation. So uh, my dog, uh, my, my dogs usually have, Dobermans are usually very high drive on toys, on balls. And so what I do is that I hide them on the track and when I encounter a problem with the dog that he's consistently time after time he needs to be deprived of food uh, to track and he's if he's not hungry he doesn't do well then I switch to a different motivation which is the toys <clears throat> so first of all the toys i choose they're smaller so if if this is my uh, regular training size of the ball um, the tracking ball is much smaller the reason being is that later on uh, if this trick works with your dog which mo most likely will work you will have to when the dog advances you will have to hide the ball in the ground so you need to kind of dig little hole and, and hide it so for that reason you need a smaller one second I want to make sure that you guys use uh, a balls with the string any type of string because the, the balls is too small if the dog is too motivated to grab it I don't want the dog to swallow it so make sure it has a string <clears throat> and then so what do you do you start your tracking regularly so you lay your track but when you want to switch dog to this motivation what you do is that play with your dog a little bit before starting the tracking just a little bit don't throw the ball no because you don't want too much of a drive but give the the, the dog uh, the ball and tug with him a little bit maybe for like I don't know 30 seconds just very little and then take it away and hide it and then tell him you're going tracking bring the dog to the tracking uh, flag and put the dog down for, for a little bit to kind of concentrate to come down from the drive from the ball but concentrate on the tracking maybe for another 30 seconds or so maybe one minute but no more than that make sure that the dog is kind of uh, calm laying down not trying to bounce around and so and then you start tracking like you usually do but in your track 
uh, at about 15 step uh, 10 to 15 step you lay your first ball when you were laying the truck you put the first ball and so when you start the tracking uh, the first few steps the dog will find the toy and it will get excited and so the motivation so the the, the stimulation for tracking will raise up because now he thinks oh wow I'm looking for toys and so you again he grabs the ball you might may be tagging with him for like once or twice but that's it you take the ball away and you hide it and then you again you plot the dog you put the dog down and make sure the dog is calm and then you restart the dog again and then at that point let the dog track for about 30 paces and find another ball so make sure you plan ahead um, and uh, so you you kind of you don't do a long track this time, but that's pretty much how I did it. I'm just sharing what I've done. So 15 step you hide the ball, then the 30th step you hide the ball, and then you do uh, about 20, 25 paces more, and you lay the uh, end of the track with the ball again. Uh, sorry, with with the tracking ball. And also I usually do the food hot dogs, so it's the end of the track he knows that that's the end of it and so at that point when the dog reaches the end and grabs the ball then you reward it and you can play you can say good track finish track so the dog knows that the track is done and he did great and then you tag with the dog you can throw the ball just play a little bit to kind of show him that it's also fun and then see how he's gonna do next time next time he's gonna be more motivated and so you can start changing uh, how often do you lay the balls. It has to be every time has to be different. Uh, sometimes you can do it after the 10th step, very at the beginning. Sometimes on the scent pad at the very, very first step. Sometimes let the dog track for 50 steps with no toy and then the first toy will be there. But always remember to, so if you're doing 100 paces, about 100 paces long tracks, which oh, that's what I'm doing at, at my phase 3. I, I don't go more about, about this, so it's about 100 to 120 steps. I uh, use about 3 balls on the track, 2 in the middle and 1 at the very end. Uh, to reward the dog and the very end one uh, the end ball can be a larger one uh, that you use for training um, that's okay and so what uh, one other thing that you do with the dog after the first try because the first try uh, is pretty much just to show the dog that it is still fun to do and so you don't kind of force to do any command but in further uh, tracks what you do is when the dog approaches the ball you tell the dog plots. You don't give the correction command, but you just pull on the dog and say, tell him plots, plots, to make sure that he lays down. What it helps you with is later on when we go to the article, uh, the dog knows that whatever is laying on the track, he needs to lay down. And so we don't do articles yet. We won't do it uh, till later, but uh, you will use this command to teach the dog to lay down if there is anything on the track and then you will see eventually he will find the ball and he will lay down he might grab it might wait for you but that's pretty much the procedure and this is this has been working with my previous dogs and with my current dog uh, it, it makes uh, tracking a lot more fun for them and so it means that they're no longer uh, dependent on how hungry they are they can track any time of the day because they think they're gonna find toys and you're gonna interact with them and play and so that's uh, uh, that's what I do in terms of uh, the shapes of my track at this point I I do serpentines uh, I try to wave n not regularly not symmetrically but I can uh, do one time I can turn to the left a little bit and then kind of wean off and then maybe go straight another time I can do the right but I do like really like a serpentine it's not a corner the dog is not ready for the corners yet uh, one thing and another troubleshooting point is that if you notice that your dog tracks only one leg uh, it means that you you've done too many serpentines and the dog keep kind of weaving and losing it start doing tr straight tracks so the dog needs to notice that it's left to right, left to right, and he he's following your steps. That's another trick. And then one last thing that I do at uh, to troubleshoot 
this uh, uh, at, at this point is that I put double line on my dog. I have my dog on a flat collar with the long line, just like we always do, and I put it under one arm, and uh, I put the choke chain on the dog, and I connect to the choke chain my shorter leash and put it under another ar armpit, and I steer the dog a little bit. So, if you remember my previous video, I t explained to you that we introduce corrections. So I use my left hand, the one that it is attached to the uh, choke chain. I use it for correction. So if the dog tracks, I, he only feels pressure from my right hand and he keeps moving. But if he's not on the track, he got um, kind of distracted or something, then I correct them. Uh, and uh, a correction uh, should be kind of short, not too strong. Just you need to feel your dog. Uh, but in a way, you hold in the dog and it helps the dog it helps you navigate the dog. So if the dog is going off track, you can always pull him back and correct. Uh, and so that also helps the dog to learn that you actually still have control even though you're behind. Uh, and uh, I guess that's, at this point, that's pretty much what I wanted to share with you. Uh, I use corn balls there, they last forever. And they're small size. Um, and uh, try it hopefully it will help your dog uh, become a better tracker and enjoy it more happy tracking